Okay. Good morning. Good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, let's uh, pray and let's get started with this morning's classes. Uh, let me just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for another week, oh God, where uh, we will, uh, Father, engage in your word. And Lord, we desire to, to truly grow, Lord, uh, in our understanding of uh, uh, who you are. And Lord, we just pray that uh, you will keep strengthening us, Lord, uh, Father God, so that we can have, Lord, a, a powerful, powerful life, Lord, as a believer and a child of God. Father, we especially, Lord, uh, commit to this morning's class. We pray that, uh, Lord, you will help us um, have all our understanding very clear, O oh God, so that it's easy for us to flow in the gift of the prophetic. We, we submit all things into your hands, Lord. We speak blessings upon all the students, faculty, and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So we've uh, been discussing about how to flow in the prophetic, the very practical aspects. And we've discussed how maintaining godly character, maintaining strong identity, these are all uh, really key, whether it is the gifts of the spirit or if, whether it is uh, any other ministry that we do. So we'll continue today and we'll see what other things we should be mindful of when operating in the prophetic. So we stopped at uh, uh, the section that talks about knowing what the word says. And it's on page 140. Um, so let me just pick up from there. I was telling us that when we know the word, we can be sure that what we are hearing is from the Lord. So 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, you know, where it says the, the spirit and the word agree. Because in some settings, you know, we we may think that the Holy Spirit will do whatever he wants. All right. Uh, or maybe that's the understanding when we see the work of the Spirit. He'll do whatever he wants. Uh, and we have no idea about, you know, whether that conforms to the word of God or not. But that's not true. Because the word clearly says that the Spirit and the word agree. So they have to be in agreement. So we can always check the word to see whether what the Spirit is saying, what the Spirit is doing is aligned to what has already been revealed. Now, in the last class, we also said that not everything may be found in Scripture, but it will be within the confines or the boundaries of Scripture. It will not violate the nature of God. Okay, so at least that much we we are uh, clear about. And so we can check and then based on that, we can interpret it. We can instruct that word to someone. We can release the prophetic word to others. And we are sure that, okay, we haven't done anything which is outside of the word of God. Now, uh, for us as believers and as, particularly as ministers, I know all of us want to be ministers of God and that's why we are here. Um, it is so important to be careful about the doctrine, the understanding of the word of God. So we find that even Paul, when he wrote to Timothy, he wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourselves and those who hear you. So he says, continue, for take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. So for a minister of God, we have to constantly we use the term self-policing, self-policing. So it is like we are checking ourselves. What is my faith, right? What are, What is my faith regarding the word, the doctrines and all, all the different things? Uh, and uh, how am I? as a believer, my, my spiritual disciplines. So these are things that we mustn't wait for another person to come and tell us. We are constantly checking ourselves. Where am I? And uh, uh, when we feel that we are slightly going away, we have to come back. right? So to keep revisiting, uh, even things like, uh, let's say, prophetic. Okay. Once we gain the understanding after this course, we may feel that, OK, now I know. 
now i'm able to flow and uh, we may even be able to flow very powerfully but it's good to keep coming back to the basics keep coming back to the scriptures like keep aligning yourself back to the scriptures so then what happens is you know that the the ship is anchored it's it will not wander away and that we have to do for ourselves that's why we call it self governing or self policing um, and, and paul told timothy that timothy you have to be careful about what you believe right take heed to yourself and the doctrine what is it that you believe at all times uh, and uh, uh, just because we we were very clear earlier it doesn't mean that we can now start neglecting to keep going back and ensuring that the doctrine is correct i still hold on to the right doctrine i still hold on to the uh, you know right values for the sake of my character Uh, in my ministry so these are important things so constantly self policing oneself so that we can protect ourselves and uh, also another practical thing is to be open to listen to godly people um we are not saying that you know you have to listen to everyone because uh, feedback will come from everywhere and sometimes some feedback is not even constructive people just want to tear us down so they'll keep saying things those things can break our spirit but we have to guard ourselves uh, and we have to like you know check prayerfully like okay god what is it that is going to build me up and especially when it comes from godly people you know they may tell you see this this it's not good or you have to change this or why did you say this something comes to us right it's so helpful we must always be open to um feedback like that if we close ourselves to feedback then we run the risk of uh, maybe you know wandering away at some point because what we are saying is uh, with that wall between us and godly people and their uh, suggestions what we are saying is don't tell me anything i'll do whatever i want and that is very dangerous so always keep that feedback open and maybe even sometimes we can ask so i do that like i i usually ask i know like a few people who who will know uh, about that particular you know when i'm speaking or sharing or something so i'll just personally request them uh, pastor can you please review please let me know any feedback so then what happens at least you you hear it early before you keep making the mistake again and again and then you can correct yourself so these are very practical things even in prophetic ministry we can keep it if there is another brother or a minister of god who also flow powerfully we can always ask them okay hey tell me what is it you know uh, they can give you they can say hey when you were when you were ministering when you were sharing maybe you could have put it like this maybe you could have put it like that so it's very helpful for us to develop ourselves so these are the things that we can put as a check to ensure that we are aligned to the word we are aligned to the work of the holy spirit the next important thing for us is to stir ourselves up okay stir ourselves up one of the ways in which we can stir ourselves up is by practicing the the gifts of the spirit other gifts which may be active um, and usually you know most of us we know that tongues is like a common gift that we all operate in so when we pray a lot in tongues it makes it easier for the release of other gifts yeah so that is so helpful and we've studied about tongues that tongues is to edify our spirit man so to strengthen our spirit man also praying in the spirit for days for hours it's so helpful you know if we can take that kind of time uh, to pray and uh, we can set aside a, an hour or a couple of hours every day uh, more time during the weekend we can have certain uh, spiritual renewal days for ourselves in a month we can set it aside may, maybe take a day off just pray read the bible and you know when we do all these things what happens is that our spirit man will become stronger and stronger and more and more sensitive to the voice of god usually the problem when we uh, hear from god one of the common problems is distraction we get distracted like is it god is it me um, is it just my emotions 
But what we say is, when we pray in the spirit, it brings down the noise of our soul. It brings down the noise of these distractions. We get more clarity on uh, what the voice of the Lord really is. Right. So praying in the spirit is very helpful. And we know Jesus said this, that uh, uh, you know, prayer and fasting, it's, it's so important for the believer. And we've understood in that context, I think Matthew 17, uh, it builds faith in us. And when there is greater faith, can we move stronger in the uh, spiritual gifts? Of course, we can. So build up the spirit man, strengthen the spirit man, build up the faith. And we also understand that prayer and fasting is something that the Bible says, you know, after the bridegroom goes, then they will fast. So the Lord Jesus is in heaven now, at the right hand of the Father. The church is supposed to pray. The church is supposed to fast. So these are things that we are supposed to do. And when we do these things, we will see a growth and an increase in all aspects, especially in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. The next one is worship. One, excuse me, one special uh, incident is in Acts chapter 13. We know at that point in the church of Antioch, the leaders were worshipping. They were ministering unto God in verse 2. That's what we study. So when they were ministering to God, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said uh, to set aside Paul and Barnabas for the work of the ministry for which they have been called. So when did this happen? It happened when the church was fasting, when they were praying, they were ministering to God. So when we are ministering to God, what could happen? The Holy Spirit, I mean, the Holy Spirit always speaks. Um, but when we are seeking God to hear his voice, this is one of the things that we have to settle in our minds. If I want to hear from God, when I'm ministering to God, it can happen. God can speak. God can release the word. So even worship, ministering to God can do that. We can hear from God. Sometimes we are worshipping and then we suddenly see uh, some pictures, suddenly get an impression in our spirit. Maybe we were not even thinking that, God, you have to speak to me. Maybe we didn't even ask that. But God starts to speak to us. So worship is another key thing that will help us flow better in the gift of prophecy. Next is desire. Desire. Remember, Paul wrote, earnestly desire. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31. Again, he repeats himself in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 verse 38, where he asks the believer to desire. So what does this desire means? See, desire means to, uh, ex to want, to expect, right? Uh, joyfully expect to receive from God. So that expectation also activates the gift of prophecy. Now, if I go with an attitude, I'll never get it. You know, I'll pray, but it never happens to me. When we keep doing this, we could hinder the flow of the spirit. But the desire, I'm praying, I know I want it, God will give it to me. Like a sense of uh, wanting it and a sense of expectation. It will flow, it will increase. I know I'm going to be able to move in this. So then what happens? We are putting a pull on it. It's like faith, isn't it? So faith, what does it do? It, it pulls whatever God has already given us. It pulls it into our lives. So desire in that way is something that will cause the gifts to operate in our lives. Um, and uh, so, yeah, keeping that desire alive. The moment we say, I don't want it, it can shut the flow. 
I don't want in this. Okay, in this time of prayer, let's just pray and close. I, I don't want any any ministry of the spirit. You know, the moment we think like that, it'll shut the door on the flow. So to desire it every time to say, okay, God, even now you can speak. Please speak. Uh, that will cause the flow to keep happening. Okay. Now, how to keep our desire alive? How to keep our desire? Uh, um, you know, like the fire burning about the gifts of the spirit. Huh. Mm. Mm. Okay. So uh, to be connected to the word of God, uh, prayer and uh, fanning in or stirring, stirring up the gifts. Okay, not good. Anything else we can do? Praying in tongues, fasting. How about learning about the gifts? When we study about the gifts also, there's a, there's a desire, right? Like we feel like, okay, I want this. So that again, when it comes to helping a people become prophetic, like pastors, teachers, it's good to teach the people. Then what happens? You can make them desire it. If they don't have the basics of God's word, it will cause them to wonder, have doubts, have confusion. Then also they may they would have seen uh, people operating in the spirit, in the gift of prophecy and seen certain abuses and they might think, oh, I don't want that. Doesn't look very nice. Doesn't you know sound very godly. But when we teach, even then it can actually cause the desire to come in. Okay, so these are all ways in which we can... Um, desire the gifts of the spirit but you know ultimately it's like loving god so when we love god uh, we want to grow in him we, we want to uh, be a blessing to the body of christ we want to be a blessing to the people obviously we will desire lord help me become better help me to have all these gifts so that i can actually be a blessing to the people so in this way we can keep our desire alive so along with desire faith is the next element faith will cause us to operate powerfully in the gifts of the spirit and we've already seen that the operation of the gift of the spirit is according to our faith in proportion to our faith so when my faith keeps increasing then the manifestation of the gifts also will keep increasing how to increase faith that we already know. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So meditate in the word of God. That is a primary way to get our faith. But apart from that, praying, praying in the spirit, even uh, our own experiences sometimes can build us up. When we see that, okay, I said this and actually there was it manif like god's power manifested in that person's life then what happens the next time i go to minister i'm feeling stronger like i'm feeling more confident actually you know god is working so even our own experiences or other people's experiences when we learn from it it can be very constructive and give us a lot of confidence when we are ministering in the gift of prophecy okay so it can build our faith Okay, next is yield to what the Holy Spirit is saying or doing. Uh, so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. So quench the spirit means, uh, it's we, we look at it something like, you know, when the water is flowing and uh, we let it flow. Now, if we we if there's a big you know pipe and the water is flowing out of it, if I try to put my hand or you know just cause some hindrances for that water to flow, uh, it it will still have pressure, but then it'll it'll get blocked. It won't be able to flow the way it should, right? So that is quenching. That is stopping. Or when a huge fire is there, what we sometimes tend to do, you know, people, uh, yeah, pour some water or pour some mud, put some mud, they just stop the fire. So the Bible says when the spirit is working, when the spirit is moving, don't quench it. Don't stop it. Let it flow. 
let him burn so in this way for us to sense which is the moment when the spirit is actually ministering so that becomes important so when we recognize that the holy spirit of god is working we've got to let him work okay uh, we also call it flowing with the spirit flowing with the anointing so in our spirit we can sense oh right now god is doing a work of restoration okay let him do let him do maybe someone singing a song of worship go ahead keep singing right or the lord is healing words of knowledge are flowing from the pastor from other leaders and all just let it flow so we've got to sense it it's like um you know when the waves are there you've seen people surfing they know which wave to catch and then they know how to surf on it so it's somewhat like that the waves of the spirit of god when we sense it we start to move with it and it becomes such a blessing for the people so when the spirit is moving the bible says don't quench don't stop let him move similarly don't despise prophecies that means that when we hear a prophetic word sometimes there is acceptance if we feel it's reasonable we are able to receive it but if we feel it's so big or so unusual then immediately the tendency is discard this is not relevant you know discard but what uh, the bible says is you can actually receive it don't despise it just listen to what that person is saying don't act on it because we discussed about judging we can judge it could be true it could be false that we don't know but when prophecies are coming in don't don't treat it lightly if someone saying a prophetic word be um, you know thankful we can just say oh okay thank you thank you god i've received this word i'm going to pray about it i'm going to see whether it was accurate or not so we generally say put it on the shelf so we can just keep it we may not use it you know sometimes people give us things which we don't need in our daily lives we keep it maybe you know sometime we suddenly need that thing then we take it and we use it so it's somewhat like that a lot of prophecies are coming coming okay let them come no problem write it all down keep it aside say holy spirit reveal to me which one is really from you and then help me to act on it so don't despise it despise means treating lightly um uh, not honoring or not valuing the prophetic word so that should not happen in uh you know through our attitudes so don't despise prophecies know how to administer the gift properly so first peter chapter 4 verse 10 where he says as each one has received a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god verse 11 if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of god if anyone ministers let him do it as with the ability which god supplies that in all things god may be glorified through jesus christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever amen so we are told that uh, any gift that is given to us it has to be ministered appropriately it has to be released in a right way so what is a right way a right way is a way which will bless the people a right way is a way which will honor and glorify god so these two things should not be compromised it should be done well it should be done accurately then it will bless it will bring honor to god but if both of these are not happening maybe the gift is pure but you know it causes confusion people find it hard to accept so all these issues will happen okay so how do we do it in the right way how do i release the prophetic word in the right way and that's something we are already discussing right the practical aspects of how to do it next is walk in wisdom so walk in wisdom again is what we have been repeating several times and we said we have to release the word at the right time in the right way okay. 
because uh, zeal without wisdom is dangerous we can be very passionate passion alone will not help passion has to go with wisdom so passion with wisdom is is like you know a, a super combination so we have wisdom also and we are so zealous for the uh, the kingdom of god and when we work like that what we said earlier it will be a blessing to the people it will bring glory to god sometimes you know the passion makes us run ahead of uh, god's counsel we receive and we are so excited and in that excitement we you know make some mistake so excitement just uh, functioning on the basis of excitement is not uh, helpful right and obviously right when we are flowing in the gifts of the holy spirit it's so exciting it's really exciting because god is speaking to us and uh, you know there are real testimonies that are coming out of what god is doing so when you're in all of that it's quite easy to get carried away which is why always staying anchored anchored in the word anchored in uh, uh, you know maybe even counsel of someone hey i heard this how do i how do i do this how do i minister this word you tell me what could happen if i go and tell them so use wisdom using wisdom will help us uh, maximize what god is actually trying to communicate okay uh, so we we always say there is something known as the art of implementation okay the art of implementation we can have brilliant ideas there are so many i mean million ideas that people get in the world but how many of them are actually done you know like maybe a, a business idea right but there are only one or two guys who actually made that business happen and they're making those dollars all the other people have the idea in their head idea in the head is good but it won't help if it's not implemented the art of implementation so similarly the plans of god the the communication of god keeps coming to us right it comes and uh, what happens is we don't know how to apply it or we apply it the wrong way the moment we say it, this is the vision we say it like the way we say it people are like i don't want to be part of that vision <laughs> you know so these are the challenges so as a person who's flowing in the gifts manifesting the gifts communicating the gift i can apply wisdom and see hey how best can i communicate it so that it can bring the maximum fruit okay from what god is trying to say yeah okay any question yeah um uh, about this walk in wisdom uh -huh. uh, uh, like walking in wisdom like it it sometimes more wisdom or our own wisdom some sometimes leads into our own interpretations like see uh if someone came to me and asked uh they wanted to know from god and they wanted me to pray for them okay and they were just uh they were just expecting a word from god or a prophecy uh what if uh what if uh, our wisdom overtakes god's yeah uh like god speaking god's word mm -hmm. like if they are in some in any problem okay they 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 want us to tell something yeah. because of that inferiority feeling that if mm -hmm. we didn't receive anything from god we may uh, let ourselves into our own wisdom speaking with yeah. out of our own wisdom yeah. out of our experiences but it may it may sounds mm -hmm. good for them i know but we know that yeah that really god spoke to us or our own wisdom we are sharing is that good or wrong yeah so uh, see that's why no that self control we saw in the last class if god gives a prophetic word we should speak if he doesn't we have to keep silent uh, so that scripture jeremiah it said he who has my word let him speak faithfully so either we can give them that word and tell them i didn't hear from god i just felt like telling you this 
so we can tell them that and make it clear uh, then it's okay they can evaluate it and act on it or if we are not going to tell them that we can even just keep quiet so that that will be hard actually because they'll be expecting like okay say something but then we are keeping quiet you can just say hey i didn't get any clarity from god so you pray pray some more just tell them like that line in between this yeah and if someone comes with a problem and if they if they are expecting us to say something and if we uh, interconnect this counseling also mm -hmm. like what we are learning in the christian counseling is very different like it's it's we uh, make the the counseling to just think of themselves we are not giving any suggestions mm -hmm. so i'm a minister of god yeah so they were in a problem they asked they asked me to pray mm -hmm. so do i have to first receive from god if i am not receiving from god can i suggest directly with my own wisdom mm -hmm. but if they are in a problem if they are seeking for the yeah. counseling and in the perspective of counseling if you think we should not give our own suggestions we should uh, i mean help them to think uh, yeah. yeah on their own so there is yeah. a thin line in between three this own wisdom god's god's mm -hmm. word and then counseling correct correct so how can we yeah see again it comes back to hearing from god only because in that moment you can discern see i'll tell you one example i understand where you're coming from you know in counseling we we don't we just help them think uh, and we are not telling them what to do they have to figure it out so there was one particular incident where uh, you know one person i was talking to for a while but the funny part is they knew what to do and it was almost going to be like a like more than a year from that time they know what to do but they're just not acting on it just not acting on it so how many times to meet how many times to tell how many times to, for them to acknowledge that yeah i'm supposed to do this i'm supposed but there was this element of fear that the person is just not doing it so i also thought what's the point every time we are having the same discussion and they are not doing it so finally towards the thing i just told them look uh, we've been discussing this for a long time repeatedly you know what to do but you're not doing it i think you should do it i told that right uh, i was not the only person speaking also there were a lot of people finally they did it but it took so much so much time so much courage for that person to actually take that step so i think we have to again discern from god think about the welfare of that person i know they only have to make the decision but maybe sometimes people are caught in so much of fear that they are scared like oh that business i can't or uh, this i can't uh, driving i can't somewhere you have to be like hey i i think you should you should do it i i feel like that's the right thing to do so there is a time to tell also anand yeah so pastor there's a difference between counseling and prophecy you no know, prophecy means we are hearing from god yeah. for the other person that we cannot compare with um, counseling counseling no yeah so don't bring it into your counseling like if you are officially counseling someone don't bring it into it see in a pastoral role right as a pastor we can be instructive at times so with that opportunity like i put my foot down at one point where i was instructive i said i think you should do it yeah um um when you say uh, prophecies really mean to pray with each other and hearing from god no okay it's not like i'm telling if I, if i'm i have to pray i'm not telling the other person you 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 see what god is telling you it's not that way no yeah so what anand is saying is like let's say god is not saying anything then what to do we are praying for them only but we don't have a word from god then what to do 
then can we tell them what we know from the word? It's more of an instruction. It's not a prophetic word. That way, he asked, is it okay to tell? My answer was, invariably, we don't. Right? We let them figure out. But there are circumstances where we have to tell for guidance sake. Sometimes we have to do that. Hmm. If if we are, we are not hearing anything from God, yeah. So can we what we read that day in the morning or yeah, something, can. whatever comes in our mind, we can. Can we share with? Them? We can, but tell them. Uh, tell it's them not it's not a prophetic word. It's just my my understanding. Uh, yeah. They they want us to tell something. Yeah. That's why they see. They don't want us to realize that then everything. Yeah. Yeah. They come to us. It is okay, Pastor. Yeah, correct. 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 So people come with the expectation and they, they want you to meet that expectation at all times. But unfortunately, we can't. Yes. Uh, like, uh, like uh, related to this question, what yeah. and like uh, you said, if we're not listening, like if we don't have a specific word from the word, mm. uh, we can instruct them what we know from the word. Mm. And uh, sometimes can that be prophetic? Because instead of god speaking into us can he mm -hmm. helps us to share something that mm -hmm. he had taught us mm -hmm. or like something that we have from his word yeah like sometimes we give the word right correct, correct. sometimes we in our hearts we have that impression of some scriptures right. but some uh can it also be through prophetic. wisdom of what we know from the word the prophetic he, uh yeah but generally we would just call it like an instruction generally yeah so somewhere it could be that it's a word from god and we ourselves are not sensing it yeah correct but generally we will call it an instruction only not a prophecy yeah, yeah. so these are the things to bear in mind <coughs> okay so what are some hindrances uh, what are some things that can slow the flow of the prophetic? Lack of proper teaching. So that is obvious because we don't have a grip on what the word says and we, we don't know that we are supposed to desire the gift of the spirit. Uh, lack of teaching can hinder the flow. Then sense of unworthiness. Okay, sense of unworthiness. So what is that? Sense of unworthiness means that uh, when gifts are given, if we feel unworthy, yeah, we, we find it hard to take it. We feel like, oh, no, why, are you, why do you want to give me? No, it's too expensive. So when we transpose this in the kingdom perspective, God is lavishing us with all these gifts of the Spirit and, you know, all these things. But our understanding should be not that we are sufficient of ourselves. You know, that scripture that pastor usually quotes, 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Uh, that scripture says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. So we have a right understanding. Okay. We have the blessings because God has blessed us, not because we are anything great or all that uh, but with that understanding we also recognize that now we have received a spirit of adoption and with that we cry out abba father he's our father and he is lavishing us with blessings and gifts and all and we know that uh, when we are zealous for the gifts it will bless the body of christ so that's a right attitude then what happens we are willing to receive the gift because we have a right attitude now we are not puffed up uh, we are just saying, oh, my father is giving me, he is blessing me with all these precious gifts. It will be a blessing to the body of Christ. I am going to flow in it. right? So that one. But if we don't have that understanding, we'll, that, sell, that sense of unworthiness. Oh, God is doing all these mighty things through my life. Oh, God, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. You know, we get stuck in that I'm not worthy. God is saying, no, no, you're worthy. I made you worthy through Jesus. Receive the gifts flow in the gifts um, but we are there you know uh, causing a stop for the 
flow. So that's also something we have to work on. So how to work on it? Our identity in Christ. Where we say, no, you know, I am a child of God. I have, I am a partaker of the new covenant. Every blessing of the new covenant is mine. The spirit has been given, uh, you know, to me. Uh, the the anointing breaks every yoke. The anointing over my life will break the yokes that people come with. Make declarations like that. Then you see powerfully how God is working. Not because we are great. No, never. Right? But God is doing his work through all of us. Different vessels. We are just making ourselves available. So that's the way to look at it. The next one is fear of making mistakes. So we understand this. Anybody who fears making mistakes will never do anything <laughs> because mistakes are bound to happen. Whether you want to cook or whether you want to drive, some or the other mistake we end up making. But isn't that the way to learn? That's how we learn. So when it comes to prophesying, hearing from God, we don't want to make a mistake. That's a good resolve to have. I don't want to hear inaccurate. But there are many ways to test it out. Isn't it? We can always check with the word. We can always pray some more in the spirit and see, OK, do I have a witness of the spirit? We can have a third person judge the word of prophecy. So there are many things we can do to be more accurate. Uh, but just because that accuracy doesn't come right in the beginning, like there is a tendency to make mistakes. For me to say, I'll never prophesy, I'll never get into this thing of gifts of the Spirit because I'll make a mistake. We can't, st we can't do that. It's fine. Just start. Just start. Just step out. We learn. Okay. And there are things, key things, uh, which as I've been saying, you know, we'll, we'll uh, see. We do say that. When it comes to big life decisions, uh, if you're not sure, don't say it. You know, like in seven days, you're going to get a job. In five days, you're going, going to get a promotion. Uh, in six days, you're going to get married. You know, people will, because those are big decisions. And if the person is not careful to judge, they may make a mistake. But then to say things which will not affect them that majorly, which obviously, if I'm hearing from God that, you know, um, God is going to help you <coughs> become stronger in the word. That you can say, because that's more or less, you know, a, a general thing uh, that all believers must have. So we, we can be careful. Uh, we are not telling, like, I, I'm saying this because last time there was that question, right? Like, just be, it's not trial and error where you're, like, imagine, you know, if you think of the hospital and a doctor, if the doctor is doing trial and error, will you go? <laughs> Nobody will go there because it's life threatening. Even in prophecy, it's very serious. We can't do trial and error over there. But all I'm saying is there are ways of learning to be accurate. And for some small matters, which you obviously in within myself, I know that 100% I'm sure God is saying, you know, get deeper in the word. And it will not affect that person. Uh, negatively if i just go ahead and release that word so those kind of words quite easily we can share but yeah other words we know we have to be careful okay uh, the last one i'll just touch on this and stop hopefully next class we can do practice fear of man okay fear of man a uh, proverbs 29 verse 25 it says the fear of man brings a snare but whoever trusts in the lord shall be safe. So what is the meaning of this? The Message Bible puts it like this. The fear of human opinion disables. I'm sure this has happened to, uh, or we've seen this happen to some children in school when the teacher says, okay, you speak. They'll just go on stage and freeze because they're so scared of the audience. They're so scared of the teacher. They're looking at people. And what is their mind saying? What will they say? Will I make a mistake? And then they're not able to even speak a word. They just froze. That is the fear of man. And that can happen even when it comes to ministry and flowing in the gifts of the spirit, where we are wondering, what will pastor say? What will this one say? What will that one say? And then we are not bold enough to release the word. So 
that is something we have to overcome spirit of fear when that that setting is for us to release the gifts go ahead to release it don't let uh, you know that the opinions of people around it it should not become like a chain and a handcuff where we are not able to move okay so the opinions of people are important but they should not paralyze us fear of man we are worried about people what will they say what will they do how will they receive it what will they say about me oh, so many thoughts actually go through our mind be strong in our identity and then when we do that we can overcome the fear of man okay so with that i think i'll stop uh, we've reached the end of time if at all there's any question we can deal with that or we can pray and wrap up for today next class surely we'll have uh, practice okay fine so let's pray then pray and uh, close uh, i just want to request okay nikhil you don't mind nikhil can please pray father we thank you for this day for this time lord once again we come to your presence lord as what we have learned father we can apply in our lives father that gift of prophecy so we can flow in in gift of prophecy lord jesus help us to flow thank you father in jesus name i pray amen amen okay thank you everybody see you see you on friday have a great week bye for now